this is Braden Flynn, your host of the Artist Report. I was recently out in Vegas for the WPPI Photo Convention and got to sit down and got interviewed at the Richard Photo Lab booth and just talked about inspiration, photography, what I'm up to, and all that jazz. Recorded it for you and hope you like it. Here it is. I'm going soon. I'm going to leave tonight. I'm a lot of so, I did it all for you. Thanks for joining us, guys. This is Braden, Braden Flynn. Um, one of the best friends to the lab. When I called him and I said, Braden, we want to have you speak at WPPI this year. He's like, oh, I don't think I'm going, but for you guys, I'll go. I think you just got here, right? Just pulled in. That's, see, that's love right there. <laughs> um, so Braden, ladies and gentlemen. Happy right. to be here, folks. <laughs> All right, let's start out, Braden. Uh, what did you do before photography? Before photography, I was, I guess before I was doing it as a profession, like I've been photographing for a while. Mm -hmm. um, before becoming a professional, I you know, was a student, went to school for business at USC. Um, fight on. And then, um, you know, and for me, I feel like that gave a huge background in terms of like running a business, because how many of us as artists you know, struggle with the business side of stuff. Um, so that, but then I was always, I was shooting bands while I was in college and doing that for magazines. And, you know, but um, post-college, I went into commercial real estate, you know, very similar to photography. And, um, and from there, actually left. I'd also been volunteering at a church and then working as a youth pastor. And they offered me a full-time job. And so I ended up taking that and leaving commercial real estate to go be a full-time youth pastor. Um, and in the meantime of that, was still shooting photos. And um, it was one of those where it's just working for a small church. The, the head sort of directing pastor, he's, he's like encouraged a bivocational life because like how long can you last at a small church making a salary and have a family in Orange County? Not very long. Um, so I was always shooting, but what... Do you want me to keep rambling? Yeah, no, okay. please. Um, you know, I was always shooting, but what, what that really allowed for me to do was I could be really picky with the stuff that I wanted to shoot. I wasn't desperate to shoot anything that came my way. So it really allowed for me to only take the sort of jobs that I wanted to take that seemed attractive, that seemed worth it. I didn't have to, like... I, first year shooting weddings, my price point started at 5000 you know, so it's just like, if it came my way, I, I allowed for time to give a discount, um, but then people saw value in that, you know, because your price sort of creates value to a degree. Um, yeah, so, so that's basically sort of the morphosis into this, and all of a sudden started getting to the point where I was getting crazy booked um, and saying no to a lot because I couldn't do that and work a full-time job. Um, started having kids and then decided to go full time. Was it a scary transition to go full time? It was because it was just like in, in the process. Um, do you want me talking to you? Talking to them? Probably, you, I both. To I'll, I'll go back and forth. Um, <laughs> so the scary part was is that I was only allowing myself to take maybe like 10 to 12 weddings a year, and I did that for about two or three years. Um, and when I decided to go full time, it was December, and I had I think three or four weddings on the books, and I was like, I don't, you know. So there's there's the part that's like, uh, hopefully this works out. Um, so I was starting that first year, starting booking. Really, my first wedding was the last weekend of April. I shot 65 weddings between April and December. Wow. Um, so yeah, I had several three wedding weekends. I had a four wedding weekend in there. Um, I just started saying, and you know, there's a lot of travel involved. So it was a, uh, busy first year, but, um, I would say very successful one as well. It was. Yeah. And that was the first year that I started using you guys. So shooting so many weddings, um, how do you keep it fresh? How do you, how do you keep, stay inspired? That is a great question. Um, you know, there's, there's the, that is, that is a difficult thing. And I would say you have to have interest outside of photography. You have to, um, shoot, you have to shoot personal work. You cannot just shoot your jobs. Um, because you, you I was just at a conference called, um, it was a yeah field trip. Awesome. You need to go next year. Um, you know, but was talking to a lot of commercial photographers out there and they're saying, listen, if you are a commercial photographer, you get hired for your personal work initially, then you start just shooting commercial work and all of a sudden your work gets stale, you stop getting hired. Same deal will happen with weddings. Um, 
yeah. I, <laughs> I just came from talking to this deal and I had to talk for like an hour and a half. So I, I like in my talking mode. What are some of the uh, personal things that you like to shoot? It's um, just even like I drove out here with Aaron over there and like literally it took us on a sometime a three and a half hour drive. It took us about six plus hours to get here because I'm like, oh, stop, stop. You know, it's like and I, I did a road trip series, you know, and I just wanted to shoot old buildings and signs. Um, I like to shoot, do creative things with my kids, um, try to do fo- not just like documenting life, but sometimes I have pretty cute kids. Um, one of them is a lot easier to photograph than the other because the other <laughs> doesn't stop for a picture. But the other one, other one, I can get him to do just about anything. And like, I like trying to like just think of creative series that um, to do to just like something that tells a story that has cohesiveness but is interesting. Have you ever taken anything uh, creative that you've done with the children and maybe used it for a professional or paying gig? I am in the process of a series right now that I'm yeah planning and looking to do that. Um, I have two of them. What are their ages? Oh, well, I have two projects, but I also oh, have two children. I, that's um, what I thought you I meant. have a four-year-old and an almost two-year-old and got a little baby girl on the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Congratulations. Thank you. Good Thank luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. What, what, do you, what do you do when you're not shooting? For fun? Keep yourself refreshed? Yeah, I am... I would say the opposite of an introvert and I'm energized by being with people. So like one of my favorite things to do is be with people, whether I, I love, and I think a personal project for me too is shooting. I love going to band like concerts, you know, shooting personal work for me is going and shooting bands or even some of my commercial editorial work is, I feel like it's personal work to me because I'm making most of my money with weddings, but then being able to um, take jobs that maybe like smaller companies that are wanting to use me but don't have the budget. So I was like, sure, I'll do that. And I'm still getting paid. It's covering my film costs. And then um, I'm getting to shoot stuff that I really am interested in shooting and I get total creative control. Um, yeah. Favorite band to a photograph? Oh. Now that I have children that... Uh, <laughs> wake up at five in the morning and I get them regardless of what time I go to bed. Um, it's been less appealing to go drive to LA and shoot bands, but I think one of my favorites to shoot was Arcade Fire, um, just because I was such a fan of that band. Uh, I, I've always had seasons of like favorite, you know. Uh-huh. I used to be in hardcore metal and they're extremely fun to shoot because you've got hair and tattoos and guitars behind the head. Um, <laughs> Bright Eyes, I loved him for a long time. I shot him, uh, Conor O'Burst a bunch. Um, got to shoot the White Stripes. I got to sh- right now, like I love the band Delta Spirit. They're super fun to shoot. Um, Cold War Kids, yeah, all that stuff. That's awesome. All right, so how did you hear about Richard, or how did you meet Richard? How did you start working with us? Through WPPI. Um, through, I actually I. I had been, like, I went to school, after I went to business school, I went through and I took um, every photo class at our local community college and printed and just, like, really drawn to film. I wanted to shoot large format, I wanted to shoot Polaroids, I wanted to shoot film, you know, and then with weddings, I always was still shooting film, but was doing digital because that's sort of what everyone was doing with weddings, you know, and then every time I was like, but I always like my film images more, and I I was sort of like, I didn't want to make that jump, one, because it's expensive, and... Um, just, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, I just hadn't. And then I, I came and just, I didn't even know who John Canlis was. And I think someone here told me, go hear him talk. And I did. And he was just crazy inspiring. Um, and from after that deal, like literally started just 100% film. What year was that? Four years ago, I'd say. Um, yeah. And that was, that was, Having all my clients having booked me, not knowing that I shoot film and not caring, I still like did that, and I, I ate the cost because it's what I wanted to do. In those uh, in those early days, was anybody ever amazed that you were actually shooting film? Yeah, Any of your still, clients? Like I shoot Polaroids now, and people are like, "What is that?" And I was like, "It's called a Polaroid." <laughs> um, yeah. Wow! Instant something. <laughs> it's great. What's the the best piece of advice someone gave you when you were uh, starting out as a photographer? Um, 
I'd say a couple couple of your boys from uh, Richard Photo Lab came down to my studio and they were seeing that I was shooting the volume that I was shooting, and they basically told me, "Is like you have to figure something out. You figure something out because you are going like this pace is tough, and whether that's like hiring someone else, whether that's just completely like figuring out the outsourcing." situation of all of your film to them to, you know just like needing to figure out a system it was that and then I also had a um, someone was giving me just business advice and he said you no matter what if it costs you more you have to hire someone else in your business you have to hire an office manager and I did and that was a really difficult process for me of just I think being being an artist and allowing yourself to delegate work to someone else allowing yourself to delegate like responding to an email as you you know like my company is Braden Photography it's it's me you know so allowing someone else to sort of um, write for me to edit photos for me to like do client interactions for me like that was a really hard it took maybe two-ish years to get to a place where I like I can't do that stuff anymore I don't, and I don't even want to like I don't touch my mail I don't touch like I don't like to touch my emails but I still do mm -hmm. um, you know but that element of just like needing to, like, I don't care. There's other ways to outsource. If you don't hire an office manager, you're shooting film, you can use this. There's, um, you know, other play like they do digital processing. If you shoot digital, like, outs charge, you can charge an extra $300 in your wedding package and outsource your digital processing to someone else. So you're not sitting around all midweek doing that. And you can actually go out and shoot personal work or you can shoot something that keeps you inspired. That's. No, that's my one piece of advice that I then gave advice. <laughs> yeah, because that was going to be the follow-up question. Um, a lot of these people are just starting out. Yeah. What, what would be uh, one piece of advice you would give to them? Um, Other than the outsourcing, of course. Yeah, besides outsourcing, I would say really figure out what you love to shoot and shoot that. Um, there's a book I've been reading called... Um, Aaron, what's my book? What's the book, Aaron? Come on. Um, die empty, you know, and, and in that, in that book, there's a quote that says, he, he was basically talking, he said, there's, there's no cover band that's ever changed the world. He's like, if you're just copying what everyone else is doing, your work is going to become empty and dead and lifeless. And so you have at a certain point, like, it's one thing to like study film, you know, photo history and be, you know, find things that emulate like the people that you really respect. But at a certain point, you really have to figure out what your voice is and what you love shooting and you need to shoot that. And then um, that would be one big piece. The other piece is if you are not attracting the type of clients you want to attract or if you want to attract the type of clients you want to attract, only put out online the stuff that you want to get back because what you put out online is what you're going to attract. You know, so if, yeah, so really, really be critical of your own portfolio and shoot what you want to be shooting because you're going to be shooting what you are shooting. Um, people starting out uh, tend to mention that um, sometimes the bride and groom are somewhat uncomfortable. Well, what do you do to relax them and, and make the photos that you shoot look so natural? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like that's, um, that's one of the strong parts. When I meet with a couple, I basically tell them one of my strengths is like I'm really good at getting people to be natural in front of the camera. Um, it's talking to them. It's getting them to interact. It's not like don't worry about where their hands are and what they're doing. Like talk to them so that they are not feeling like they're being photographed. You know, so you want them to interact. You want to draw out those real emotions, those real deals. So, um, and if you're nervous, that's going to come across to them and then they're going to feel nervous. So it's like you've got to shoot enough where you get relaxed enough where you can actually be comfortable shooting and give direction and have fun with it would be sort of what I'd say about that. <laughs> What's one area of your business that you would either change or improve upon? You know, that's a tough one because I've been shooting so much travel work right now um, and I've been trying to shoot travel work and now that I'm shooting travel work, I love it, but man, it is so hard with a family. Um, I'm gone a lot. Like, I've been gone all weekend. I'm here for two days. I get home for a day. I'm gone to New York for four or five days. It's a lot of traveling. It's hard. Um, I need more balance in my life and work. I've been... I had probably four years where I never took a day off. Um, you know, I still shoot probably too much. Um... But I think the best thing that can happen is if you recognize that you need a day to... Re I need a day... 
giving, I'm giving advice to myself now. I need a day to recharge. <laughs> and if I don't take that, then I'm fried. Then I don't even want to pick up a camera. You know, it's like I need to take time to actually do the things that I love to do. I need to surf. I need to exercise. I need to be with my family and I need to be with friends. Those are the things that I've, in this last year, that I've really realized that I've sacrificed. Um, and it's, it's been killing me inside. Um, and so I am in the process of rebuilding those areas. So I would say the best piece of advice would be to get that in there. Like get in a day to do something for yourself. Whether if you do yoga, go to yoga. If you need to go hike, go on a hike, go be by yourself for a little bit. You need to recharge so that you can go out and work hard, um, and do stuff that you're proud of and do stuff that you love. How long have you been shooting uh, weddings? Weddings about six ish years, five or six years. What's the what's the biggest difference from maybe the first wedding you ever shot or maybe the first couple to to what you do now? <laughs> I carry about five more cameras at a time than I used to. <laughs> um, I don't think a lot other than like my confidence level and I complete like I used to like. My brain is really weird in the sense like I have so many things going on at the same time and then I, I am such a perfectionist that I always want everything to be like beyond the top, over the top, amazing, which I still do, but I sort of know now what it, I need to do to get there where before I was just like desperately doing everything and like shooting a ton. Um, I shoot a lot less than I used to, but I know that the quality of the shots that I, I know what I want now, um, where before I think I was really searching for what I wanted. Um, and I shot a ton to figure that out. You mentioned earlier that you got uh, two, two side projects going, and I've spoken to you about them before. You seem really passionate about them. You want to talk about those a little bit? Sure, yeah. Um, I started a project called The Artist Report, which I'm basically sitting down doing stuff like this where I'm talking and having conversations with other just creatives and he's talking. A- he's actually interviewing me, so just you guys are here <laughs> to see me speak. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like I've been sitting down with people and just going deep and going, um, just, yeah, really having conversations about like, how'd you get to where you are? Um, pretty much the same sort of stuff that Cohen's just asking me, but just like I found in this industry, there's, as an artist, there's, there's so much where it's sort of isolating and you, you sort of feel like you're in your own world. You're so it's like, I love hearing stories. I love hearing how other people are inspired, what other people do to, for fun, what other people do to stay creative. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. And so it's just about to launch, but you could probably follow it on Instagram, The Artist Report, at The Artist Report. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start releasing that, and it's going to be a really, hopefully a really fun resource and community for just photographers. Jen's on my list interview. What's the other project? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Do I have another project? Okay, because yeah. when we were talking about the kids, you mentioned I said, "Oh, the two oh. kids," and you're like, "Oh, there's two projects too." Okay, those those are more just personal projects. Okay. I'm, don't copy me. Um, <laughs> one that I'm looking at doing is I'm taking my kid. Like, I have one project. This is personal work that I'm doing where I'm getting little kids on motorcycles and dressing them up in old motorcycle gear and just like <laughs> shooting a bunch of kids, you know. And, and I think ideally, I would want to be like shopping that to, you know, like. J. Crew kids, Gap kids, you know, different stuff like that. Another, and then another project um, with kids that I wanted to do is uh, superhero kids and getting them dressed up in costumes, just shooting them in like different situations. And I'm like researching old, like old photos and just trying to redo stuff with that are that's fun and sort of funny, but it tells a story. So like that's those are sort of projects that I like doing for personal work because they like make you think a little bit outside the box. There's something different and they're fun. You shoot a lot of uh, travel, you mentioned. Most interesting uh, place you've shot at? I'd say getting to shoot in Colombia was pretty amazing. Um, old uh, Aaron came with me on that trip. It was awesome. Um, Colombia's route, I think my favorite probably was this old um, town outside of Mexico. It's like two hours outside of Mexico City. Um, I just posted a photo from it on my Instagram a while ago. But... Um, yeah, it's just like this killer old sugar mill built in the 1400s. It's just, I, I love anything that has like character and old aesthetic and definitely had all of that. Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> well, I'm going to have another kid, um, <laughs> data three. I see myself shooting a lot more commercial work, um, still shooting a lot of weddings, but being really particular with the weddings that I'm shooting. Um, and 
I'm going to have a balanced life. <laughs> I'm going to be spending more time with my family, spending more time with friends, and having a lot more fun. Um, how, how many weddings are you shooting a year now, approximately? I honestly didn't even count last year. I would say it's in the 45 range. How, how many are you turning down a year? Well, there's... I don't like blatantly turn down. I right. sort of do. Mm -hmm. um, I pre-qualify a lot to just make sure it's sort of going to be a good fit. And I try to I try to meet with every single person that I'm potentially going to shoot because I feel like that's important um, because I want there to be chemistry on both sides of the on the table. Um, I, you know, I've got price points that sort of eliminate a huge portion of people that can hire me. Um, so that's that's the biggest factor that sort of sets that apart. What do you do to vet them? Like, how, how do you, what do you do in order to figure out that you're going to vibe with that person and that's going to be someone that you actually do want to shoot as opposed to someone that you're like, you know what, maybe I'm not right for you or however you would phrase it to them that you don't want to shoot their wedding or their event? Yeah, I do everything I can to meet a couple in person. Um, I feel like if you're just sending out pricing as an email, you're basically, it's just another email and they're just price shopping. But like, if they really want you, you meet with them. And like, if you can't meet in person, Skype. If you can't Skype, FaceTime. Like, do something to just get like, a face-to-face -face interaction. If last case, talk on the phone. And you can generally get a feel for someone on the phone. And is this the sort of person that you're going to enjoy shooting? You know? And um, in that case, I would say, yeah, that, that's basically what I try and do. Okay, I'm um, going to open it up for questions in case anybody has anything for Brent. Yeah. Um, you were saying... I'll repeat the questions. I know. Um, awesome. That, uh, yeah, that, um, when you were kind of not sure what you wanted from your images, you were shooting a lot. Do you mean you were shooting a large volume of images like for a wedding, or you were out shooting a lot of different projects, like you were going out? You know, yeah. That makes yeah, the, que the question was... When I, was, when I said earlier that I was shooting a lot um, when I first got started, and was that just to shoot a lot at a wedding, or was I shooting a lot? I was both. Yeah, I was, I was yeah, exactly, and I was doing both. Um, at weddings, I was shooting a ton. I was getting like every single possible photojournalistic image that I could, but I was also, I don't, yeah, I don't really know, maybe like 5,000 images. Um, but you know, I was also shooting a ton. I was, I was shooting anything that came, I'm a yes man, you know, so I was shooting anything that came my way. I was shooting bands three times a week. I was shooting, um, lots of weddings. I was shooting, I was finding friends to shoot. I was putting together my own shoots and doing like fashion editorial stuff. Um, yeah, so I was shooting a lot and I was shooting a lot. Yeah. I think people would find it interesting to find out how did you... As your volume started increasing, I'm sure you started... How did you figure out your price point? Because you said you started out at 5000 and I'm sure that's probably increased as time has gone on. H how did you figure all that out? Um, well, I knew friends. Like, I had shot... When I got married, I had shot with... Do you all know Jessica Clare? I had shot with Jessica Clare for... A, I, I was shooting bands and fashion stuff, and then she ended up getting introduced to me and then had her shoot my wedding. And I was like, hey, listen, like, I don't shoot weddings, but like, I'll, I'll assist you and will that help with the price on the wedding, you know? Um, and she said, sure, you know, and ended up shooting for the next, like, year and a half, two years with her. And I learned a ton from her. Um, and part of that, like, and I had met a lot of other amazing people. Um, and so I sort of had a feel for where price points were on, like, a higher end. And so, yeah, I just sort of, 5000 felt worth my time. Um, yeah, and so I've, I felt like pricing sort of creates value as well. If you're, if you're pricing yourself lower, then people... Don't, don't value you as much as they do when you're priced higher. Sort of as I've gone on, I've had to just figure out really like what does it cost me to live and how much do I have to shoot to actually make that living, which is my wife doesn't work. She's a stay-at-home mom, which is, and she's amazing at it. Um, and I have to shoot a, I have to, <laughs> I basically have to make a lot of money to like just survive and own a house in Orange County. And so you have to figure out like you have to, so I'm not shooting 75 weddings at like $2,500. Like I have to price myself higher. Um, and I, that's a great answer. Yeah. And I, and I am able to, I, I think work sort of speaks into it, but I can have confidence enough to like tell people, well, this is, this is what I charge because one, I've got high expenses and, um, two, it's like, this is what I feel like I'm worth. So you said when you were going full time into weddings in December, you only got three, and 
back from April to the next December, you got 65. Right? So what happened in those three months to get you in those other sales? <laughs> that, that's actually a great question. That is. Um, Let me re- can I repeat it for those two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Brandon mentioned earlier that he had three weddings booked for December, and then he went full-time, and he jumped from April to the following December to 65 weddings. What happened uh, in order to, uh, to get that jump? Um, yeah, I ended up having that December, I shot a wedding in Santa Barbara that was just gorgeous. Um, it, it like, it was, and it basically got picked up on most every blog that was out there at the time. And, um, like Glamour Magazine featured it in their wedding section, you know, once wed featured it, I think it's, it's wedding be pro even still around. Is that still around? Um, you know, Wedding Be Pro was huge at the time. Through a friend, they featured it, and people saw it from there. So, had had one like nowadays, weddings don't get featured like that because blogs want exclusivity. Where it literally got featured everywhere, um, and and from that one wedding, it it really like I already like had inquiries coming in, but that one wedding definitely um, set things up a big notch, you know. And then from there, attracted, and it was it was a much different. Um, couple they were really hip the wedding like the wedding today i don't even know if it would get featured because like details were minimal it was you know just very simple but the location and the portraits were i uh, stunning um I, still it was my second wedding i ever sh- no that's not true it was it was like it was early you know shooting that wedding um but yeah so that sounds like that's, it's still one of your favorites yeah i still have that album on my table that i show people but yeah, so so that and then and then stuff just kept steamballing from there. I attracted that sort of couple, kept shooting more of that. Yeah. Yeah. So what were my fears from the beginning? And did, was that the question? And then how did I become more free from them? You heard it better than I did. So. Yeah. Um, you know. I don't really stop and th- I, I'm more I'm more fearful now than I was then. Um, be and it, it's more so because now I have a mortgage and I have um, you know kids and have to like make it happen and already work you know so I think it came it came with com- I think just the more I shot the more the confidence came. And I set up my own shoots, and I kept shooting that. Where enough, where um, I knew exactly what I was doing, you know. And and maybe it's working with some other people. And like, if you're not booked as much as you want to get booked, try to go work with other, like, have other friends. Like, hey, I'll shoot with you, you know, just to like see how they do things. And like with commercial photography, like you would go assist, and you'd see how they handle their clients, you'd see how they handle their lighting, they see how they handle their crew, and so you get this other taste from all over. Um, yeah. From those experiences, yeah, yeah. Does that help? <laughs> My voice is gone. I'm sorry. You had mentioned that uh, in your emails, when you get an email and inquiry, you don't give your prices right away, and you prefer to meet with them. So, what what is your response in order to see whether or not their budget is there? And you even have a budget? Do you give them like a price? Or no, no. The, yeah, like, do you give them? Do you give them like a range so that at least they can know that they can afford you or whatever? Right. Repeat. So, how do you figure out the uh, the pricing with the client? Figure out if uh, they can afford what you're charging. Yeah. Well, more so like I said before, like I don't I don't have my pricing on my website. I don't really send it out. And, and partially initially in the beginning, it's because I wanted to like I don't really give discounts anymore. Um, but initially, it's I you know because I started out with a higher price point. I I wanted to see if I really liked and connected with this couple because some of my absolute favorite weddings have been couples that didn't have the budget that I had, but I really connected with them. And it was like, shoot, you could pay for advertising in a magazine or it's like, I can shoot this couple that, man, it's going to be epic. And it paid for itself 10 times. Um, You know, one of those weddings, even like I gave a discount, then it got featured in a magazine that the magazine paid me, you know, made up for that money. But um yeah, so I wanted to get a feel for who they were and if I wanted to work with them. And if I did, then I'd be willing to work with them. Where if they, if they were just emailing me and asking me pricing, like, I, I'm not going to, I don't know who, I don't know if I want to work with you. Yeah, I do everything I can to meet. And if they're just like, keep getting on it, okay, oh, here's my base, you know? And if it's like a Friday wedding, I might say, maybe I'll give a discount if it's a Friday or maybe, you know. But at the same time, it's like, if they really want to book you, like, 
they'll meet with you, you know, or Skype with you or talk on the phone with you. And, and then I think that way too, you're not just competing against like other people in your price range. You now have a face to your name. You're not just an email and you've got a personality and that's why someone's going to book you over the next person. That's what I'd say. Yeah. Anyone else? So what do your packages or like packages or how you do your pricing includes? Like do, do, does every wedding get all the prints or an album or how does it work for you? Yeah, that was something that I did because you do recognize like people like sort of go off of your base pricing point. And with that, sometimes that number can be scary if it's semi high. Um, and so what I started doing is taking stuff out of my packages that I was like, let's say I was shooting 60 plus weddings a year and I was including my, I, I initially included engagement shoots and I included the high res images and I included like full coverage and shooting that volume and then shooting probably like 60 to 70 engagement shoots a year and then doing other shoots. Like I was like, I don't ever want to shoot an engagement photo again, <laughs> you know? And so it got to the point where like I, and there's, there's some couples I really wanted to shoot their engagement photos because that's fun. Like I'm going to New York on Friday to shoot engagement photos for a couple and it's going to be awesome. We're just going to like go walk around and it's like hanging out with friends, taking their pictures. I love that. What I didn't love is the times when it wasn't as much of that connection, and, and it's hard. Um, and then th that's how I felt like I was getting burnt out. So I took engagement shoots out of my packages. I took high-res images. You asked the question. You took high-res images out of the package, um, and I started limiting my hours. And so now, if they want those things, they're paying for them um, versus just throwing, like, giving them the whole house. You know, it's like, <laughs> let, them, you know, let them fix up the bathroom, um, <laughs> you know? So, so there's, there's that element of, yeah, I, I took that and it basically raised my prices by $3,000 by keeping my base price the same, you know? So, so that's, that's, I would say a good strategy. Yeah. Anyone else? Any other questions? All right. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, it's called buying a lot of it right now. Um, the question was FP3000B, the Polaroid film, which is um, basically going away. Um, I don't want to be buying it at like 25 bucks a box, so I'm buying a lot of it myself, spending probably a couple thousand dollars, don't tell my wife. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a sad thing because I love that film. There's still a lot of the 100C. I'm, hopefully Fuji keeps that around for a while. Um, but when they start knowing they're discontinued that, I'm going to buy a lot of that and, you know, keep it in a place that I can keep shooting it. Or, you know, it seems like Impossible Project will hopefully come out with something that could be shot with a land camera or something. Um, they're doing amazing stuff. And, yeah, so, but yes, yeah, so I'm sad about that. <laughs> Good question. Um, I think I'm so going to actually use that for the next interview, by the what's way. What's so. my elevator pitch for my photography? If someone had never seen me before and said, oh, what do you do? You know, um, I would say I shoot photos that really show emotion and they show there's a realness in my photos. Like I, I love taking pictures of people that look really candid and real and really expressive. Um, so when I shoot, I do a lot to get people to have real interactions and try to draw that out of them. And that's what I'm drawn to. <laughs> I always think of your, your stuff as like organic. It looks cool. like real to me, yeah. you know? Well, then, good. That's what I'm trying to do. Like if Richard Photo Lab was the fruit section of a supermarket, yours would be the organic stuff. The organic section. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> all right, uh, guys, let's, uh, let's give it up for Braden. Coming all the way down. Thanks, coming out, guys. Straight to, the, straight to the booth. Thanks so much for Welcome. coming by. And um, we'll have some more speakers in a few minutes.